You're listening to Ask a Black Doctor, Friday Facts About COVID-19 featuring Dr. Bukasi Dubé. Join us every Friday at 8 a.m. and 2 p.m. for a half an hour as we discuss issues surrounding the current pandemic, vaccines and distribution, dispel myths, provide facts, and address concerns. We'll also be providing updates about COVID-19 vaccines and discuss how we can build a better culture around black health. Episodes will be available wherever you listen to podcasts, so head on over to the numbers.fm for the link to the show. Now let's jump into it. Welcome back to another episode. I am DJ Ambush here with Dr. Bukosi Dubé. How are you, sir? Hey, I'm doing well, my man. I'm doing well. It's, it's, it's good to see you. It's good to be back. It's good to be having these conversations. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. It's, it's been a busy week. Going to be doing some traveling next week for the holidays, and I'm looking forward to some of what we've been discussing and what we're going to discuss today so I can take it to the Thanksgiving table. <laughs> <laughs> so this is your prep session for the Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> yes. Everyone at the table has some type of medical degree. I'm the only one without one. So now I get to join the conversation and be a little bit, oh, yeah, I heard about that. Uh, are you aware of these numbers? I can come with a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, hey, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, thankfully, uh, I have you in my corner. You made me feel a lot more safe about traveling. Uh, we talked about, you know, the recycling of the air on the flights, and you were just like, it's actually cleaner in the air, cleaner air in the flights than it is in the airport, which I was just like, wait, what? So thank you, thank you, thank you. This is what it means to get accurate information and not get your science from the memes. So thank you. Thank you tremendously for that. Could you do the pleasure of introducing our guest? Well. Yeah, of course. Uh, so today, man, this is, it's, it's awesome having uh, Dr. Evans, Dr. Christopher Evans join us again. Uh, he was our very first guest for the show. And it's, mm -hmm. it's an honor to have him back on. He's an infectious disease doctor at um, Oregon Health Sciences University. Um, and uh, Dr. Evans, please, int please introduce thyself. It's good to have you back, my man. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Dr. B. Good to see you both. Um, it's always a pleasure to, uh, to be here in this space to talk to community about um, such an important issue around COVID and, you know, how, you know, COVID affects our families, especially as we're going into the holidays. So this is a really great, uh, great time to have these conversations. So thank you for having me back. Uh, thank you for joining us again. <sighs> so this week we'll be discussing breakthrough cases. This is a very hot topic. Uh, it's the first thing people mention when they are vaccine resistant. It's, you know, well, you know, if you get vaccinated, you can still catch it. You know, the the, the advantages to being vaccinated is something they just kind of skim over. So let's hop right into the discussion. We heard from community members who are fully vaccinated, but later needed to be hospitalized due to the COVID-19. COVID Why is this happening? So I, I think that, you know, you know, one of the things we know about vaccines um, for most vaccines, not every vaccine, is that there, there's always, you know, there's never 100% for everyone. Um, I, I think the, the measure for some of these new COVID vaccines, though, is whether or not people are ending up in the hospital and dying from disease. Um, you know, I think, you know, um, we knew that just even some of the high efficacy rates of, you know, 90, 95%, um, there's still a small percentage of people who probably got sick and probably people who got symptomatic disease. Um, I always say that everyone brings a different kind of uh, immune system to the table, um, you know, so our younger folks probably do much better with uh, responding to vaccines um, as opposed to our older folks. Um, if you are severely immunocompromised or, you know, you're on um, medications that suppress your immune system, then your immune system may not be sort of having, may not have the most re robust response to the vaccine. That said, though, I think the best sort of prevention is going to be the vaccine, because I think, um, you know, 95% prevention is, different, is definitely better than no prevention <laughs> at all. And so, um, you know, whatever keeps you out of the hospital and keeps you safe, um, I think is, is going to be good. And the good thing is that, you know, we know that even when people are vaccinated and they 
get um, infection, their infections may either be milder or less um, less severe and shorter. And so again, at the end of the day, vaccines are um, much better. Okay. Totally agree. Mm -hmm. Totally agree. Um, uh, I would just add that in, 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 in the state of Oregon, um, what we have seen is that our breakthrough cases are very, very small. It's, it's, it's about 4% of all the 2.6 million people that, we've fully that are fully vaccinated. So that's a very, very small number. And of that 4%, um, uh, the vast majority, I'm talking close to 99% of, of those folks have not ended up with severe illness. Mm -hmm. So just to re reiterate what Dr. Evans just said, um, you are you are better off getting vaccinated because you're you're protected. You're much safer. The chances of getting ill, to, the chances of getting of ending up in the hospital are very 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 small. Right. Um, you mentioned something, and we've talked about this before in the past. Uh, immuno being immunocompromised. This is a phrase or a terminology I don't actually remember hearing before COVID nineteen, um, but it really just speaks. In layman's terms, people who have pre-existing conditions. Um, I think having a greater discussion or at least having continued discussion around us identifying whatever our pre-existing conditions are, people living in those in that situation, being immunocompromised and not knowing it could help inform the public. Um, so for the for you two, what are some things that you think, some conditions that would be considered immunocompromised that a lot of us may not even consider? So a couple of wants come to mind. Um, you know, this is just because these are the folks that I have the pleasure of caring for. So HIV mm -hmm. um, definitely is something where you're immunocompromised. Um, if you've gotten a transplant, a lot of times when you get transplants, um, you have to be put on medications that are, you know, in a way suppressing your immune systems. And so therefore your immune system may not necessarily uh, respond the most appropriate way. Mm -hmm. um, if you're getting cancer treatments, I mean, part of, you know, um, cancer treatments, um, you know, could be, you know, the fact that we have to suppress the immune system and just having cancer in itself or being a cancer survivor. Um, we know we had the unfortunate passing of Colin Powell, who was fully vaccinated mm -hmm. and um, had to, and I think had some underlying health conditions related to malignancy and so cancer. Um, other things too, you know, I think if you are on dialysis, I mean, there are other things I think that, you know, you may not have the most robust immune system, some things that are probably more, um, I don't know, egregious or just, just, just a higher pr probability of having severe outcomes. But again, um, there's a lot of things. And then at the end of the day, and I, I say this very respectfully because I'm going to go home and see my, my older folks. Um, older folks probably have a little bit of underlying and, you know, um, deficiency to them. Um, we know that, you know, your response rates to a vaccine when you're older are probably um, not as good to when you're younger. That's why we give our older folks over 65 a high dose mm -hmm. flu vaccine, because we know that they're going to need a little bit more of a punch of a vaccine to kind of help them sort of uh, get the antibodies that are needed. And so I think there's a lot of different things. Uh, if you're on steroids, that's another thing too. So yeah. Yeah, so I totally agree with Chris. Um, and I, I like how you um, mentioned, uh, respectfully mentioned uh, that uh, uh, elderly folks uh, by, by design uh, um, have weakened immune systems, I mean, are compromised. Um, you, you know, anything that, anything that causes your system to not respond well can be in some ways considered to be... Uh, a state of being immunocompromised. Uh, we talked in previous episodes, talked about chronic stress syndrome, right? Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's, a, that's another form of being immunocompromised um, uh, that we don't typically talk about. Actually, I, I remember when I was in medical school, we didn't talk about chronic stress syndrome. Yes, granted, this is light years ago. <laughs> light years ago but uh at, at the same time it's 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 i'm glad to see that it's something that's at the forefront of people's brains now and people are talking about it more openly and honestly and and um uh, highlighting the the deleterious effects of uh, chronic stress hmm. okay so does a breakthrough case mean that the vaccines aren't working 
No, actually, it, it, it doesn't mean that um, uh, vaccines are not working. I, I think uh, Dr. Evans uh, uh, articulated this well that, you know, there is nothing that's 100%. Right. Right. So our vaccines are very, very effective. Um, um, 95, about 95, 96% effective. Um, uh, but what we have to remember is that there will be you know, that three, four, five percent of people who will not respond as well, who will not respond uh, with as robust an immune response as 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 those that don't have uh, um, as, as, as those that are uh, immunocompetent. So uh, even if you are immunocompetent, you, you can still be uh, a breakthrough case. So as stated earlier, it's highly unlikely for anyone to to being uh, to end up being a breakthrough case, um, but just because there's a breakthrough case doesn't mean that it's not it's not working. That doesn't mean that the vaccines are not working. I want to thank you both for your patience in some of these questions. I know some of the information is repetitive that you that you'll re- be relaying to us, but I think what's happening now is we have a greater community discussing um, science and medicine, something that we're completely alien to. But now we feel as though, <laughs> because of different uh, talking points that are out there, we feel as though we need to be having these conversations. And it's very, very important that we have at least a base understanding of how all of this stuff works. So to sit here and talk about the uh, efficacy and um, of, of the vaccines, uh, no vaccine is 100%. That needs to be said over and over again. That's just how vaccines work, period. No vaccine is 100%. So why are we having an expectation of this particular vaccine to be just a brick wall against any COVID infection? It's it's unrealistic if we're familiar with the way vaccines work. That's true. That's true. I I mean, you said it very, very well. It's um, nothing is 100%. um, Even, you know, when people when people have a cold or when people have have a fever and they take Tylenol, right? Not everybody's going to respond to it, and so some people respond better to to, to ibuprofen. So it's I, I, I'm trying to put it in layman's terms so mm-hmm. that people understand what we're talking about, and um, it's it, that's a similar situation where not everybody's going to respond uh, the same way as as um, as others. And one thing too, I think, is important to recognize. Sorry, here is that um, you know. The vaccine doesn't kick in the first day you get the shot. <laughs> and a lot of people think as soon as they leave the building, they have this shield around them. And, you know, it takes your immune system a time to sort of develop uh, antibodies to, to fight against the infection. So, you know, and especially with our mRNA vaccines, it takes two, two shots. It takes two shots, either three weeks apart or four weeks apart. Um, and it takes a couple of weeks after that to develop sort of antibodies. Another thing too is that, um, which I guess there's more evidence around it, why we're even talking sometimes even around boosters is that, you know, your immune system may sort of forget some things or may not remember it as well. I always think about it like if you took a, if I gave you a word and um, that was your first vaccine and I asked you about that word, you know, two weeks later, that's your second vaccine. Mm. You'd remember that word. But if I asked you about that word six months later, you might remember it. And if you're older, maybe your memory's not that good. And so I need to remind you. And so that's what our booster shots are, is that reminder. So the further you get away from your primary series, for some folks, you may not remember that word as well. And your immunity might go down. And therefore, you need that booster to kind of remind your immune system again. I love that analogy. <laughs> that that is, <laughs> I mean that that clearly articulates what we're talking about, right? Absolutely. So, okay, if you live in an area with the high COVID nineteen, well, high COVID nineteen transmission levels, or spend a lot of time amongst unvaccinated people, you could get COVID nineteen, even if we're fully vaccinated. What are some additional steps that we can do? That's a very good question. I like um, because it's speaks to what we're facing in the health um, as, as healthcare providers, right? We, uh, we know that the vast majority, if not all of healthcare providers in the state are, are vaccinated because of uh, Kate Brown's mandate, Governor Kate Brown's mandate. Mm-hmm. Um, yet we still have to care for folks that are unvaccinated. Um, 
folks who may end up in the hospital or in, in the clinics who are unvaccinated. So uh, uh, what are the chances? Are we seeing more breakthrough cases in these folks? And uh, what what is happening in the healthcare industry? And what I can tell you is that we're actually not seeing uh, a significant increase in uh, a number of um, cases uh, in the healthcare population compared to the general public. And that's in part due to some of the mitigation factors that they've put in place. You know, the face masks, the good hand hygiene, the physical distancing, you know, avoiding large crowds, those things still work. Uh, even in an environment where folks, um, there, there's a higher prevalence of, of uh, COVID-19. With the holidays coming up, we are going to be a mixed company. We are going to be, you know, around people that are vaccinated, some people that aren't vaccinated, some people that, uh, what, 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 what was the phrase he used? immunized <laughs> they may be using some alternative medicine to uh, stave off infection uh, so yes I agree we continue to do take all the precautions we've been taking before um, what are some what are some what's some ammo what's some advice we can give to some of our listeners and how to navigate some of those tough conversations this holiday? You know, to and to kind of try to better inform those members of our family and our friends that still may be vaccine resistant. I think the first thing I always think about is to really acknowledge where uh, people are coming from. I think it's it's bad when we start off with a conversation that you're right, I you know you're wrong, I'm right, and mm. I think it has to be sort of well, tell me what are your fears? Because a lot of mistrust around things are sort of rooted in fear. Um, and then that fear is sort of cultivated by misinformation. And so I think to kind of get into the root of that, I think for most of us, if we're getting, we're going home to share, you know, break bread with our families, that we're, we should be trusted sources um, in terms of, you know, hey, I got the vaccine. I was okay. I didn't grow a third arm, <laughs> you know? And so I think, you know, we love our families. We want to make sure they're safe. Um, and part of that safety is, um, you know, making sure that your family members are protected. I mean, the two, before we had a vaccine, uh, there were too many family members that unfortunately passed away and we were not able to be there at bedside with them. So celebrating, you know, together and celebrating that, you know, we're healthy is such an important thing. And, and again, being vaccinated to protect everyone um, is such an important thing. So just having those conversations from a place of understanding and not a- accusatory for anyone. Yeah. Uh, that's that's <laughs> you hit it on you hit it on the head right there you hit the nail on the head right there, right there it's it, it's understanding seeing each other as people right responding to each other as human beings um, um, uh, and also having the humility to say you know what I may not have all the answers you know I I but I'm here to listen to you I'm here to acknowledge you I'm here I see you. Um, um, in, in, in Debele, they say salibo nani, which means, you know, I see you, I acknowledge you. Um, or uh, in some cultures, they say namaste, right? It's the same thing. Mm-hmm. Recognizing that we all have differences and some people may have a, uh, so, uh, uh, you, you want to meet those people where they are. You want to meet whoever it is where they are. And, um, and also acknowledging that they may teach you something that you may not be, um, uh, fully cognizant of at the time. Uh, Chris, I have a question for you. We started talking before before we started recording, right? And we were talking about this question that I had earlier from an audience uh, uh, from, from a, um, a vaccine talk uh, from earlier this week where someone asked um, uh, long co- in patients that have uh, in patients that have long COVID, do we see long COVID in uh, is there uh, are there any numbers that we can talk of or any uh, any information that can be shared about um, uh, long COVID cases in vaccinated folks as opposed to those that are not vaccinated? So, um, so thank you for asking that question. So, uh, there's more data coming out. So, I think the bottom line is that the probability of long COVID in someone who's vaccinated is just 
less likely. Um, I've learned in medicine, never say never. <laughs> and so um, I think that, you know, there are probably, I think there was a case, some cases out of Israel um, about healthcare workers who got vaccinated and um, ended up having symptoms um, after they sort of had a breakthrough case. Um, and some of those symptoms might have persisted sort of beyond sort of six weeks and so forth. But I, I think that it is just less likely that you're going to have the persistent symptoms when you have been vaccinated. Um, you know, there are folks who got COVID back in the beginning of 2020 are still today suffering through sort of, you know, uh, shaking and neuropathy and brain fog and a lot of things. And so, um, so yeah, we don't want that to happen. And so, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's think there's more literature coming out because more people are being vaccinated. Um, I think there's small case reports again, as you know, some breakthrough cases and people having some persistent symptoms, but again, less likely. And we don't know again, how long those symptoms will last if you have symptoms beyond those six weeks and you have been vaccinated, but probably less likely to be persistent. Yeah. yeah. What, what are the most uh, common long COVID symptoms that we've been seeing or uh, that have been reported? So uh, by far the most common is this fogginess of the brain, okay. uh, the cr chronic fatigue, uh, the neuropathy, um, uh, just malaise, not just not feeling well, um, mm. uh, low energy that we kind of alluded to. So th those are by far the most common things. And um, uh, I actually know one person very, I have a good friend who, who had, um, um, had long COVID and his was actually pretty significant. He got COVID prior to the vaccines coming out. This was in June of, 20, June of 2020. Okay. And uh, has gotten lost in his neighborhood where he has lived for a long time. Um, um, so it's and this is a, this is someone who's young in his in his in his early forties. So it's mm. it's it's real. It's it's um, it's something that it's something that we have to take seriously. Um, and I just wanted to tag tag along uh, tag on to what uh, Dr. Evans said earlier, which is um, the chances of getting long COVID after being vaccinated are incredibly low. Why? Because the chances of getting COVID after being vaccinated are very very low. So it's uh, um, uh, it, it makes a, a strong argument, a strong case for uh, for getting um, vaccinated. So having long COVID after being vaccinated is like a fraction within an already small, small yes. number of, of yes. yeah, probability. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, it's, so possibly there are people in our family, in our community right now that never got vaccinated that are dealing with long COVID and don't even know that they actually have long COVID. Uh, well, well, yeah, yeah. So th th they may have they they may have these symptoms that they cannot understand that they cannot explain. Right. Uh, but yes, so they they may not fully understand that. Oh, it is because of this uh, post viral uh, post viral uh, uh, sequelae that they that that they're experiencing. And just to kind of tag on to, I mean, having this is, I mean, this is something, of course, we see because so many people have been infected with COVID, but we have seen post viral syndromes where people have recovered from, you know, whatever virus it is and persistently have symptoms, po you know, after that. So it's not on, it's not unusual to, to, to have this happen in, you know, in a small segment of people. And again, we may not know why, you know, some people get COVID and they, they bounce back and other people, they have these persistent symptoms. I mean, especially with the lung findings, we know there's scarring that happens in the lungs because COVID does a lot of damage to all your organs. Um, and, you know, some of that scarring is not going to be reversible per se. So, um, you know, people will continue to have ongoing symptoms of shortness of breath um, just because again, um, they've had some of the damage from COVID. And if someone does find out that they indeed have long COVID or dealing with some, you know, something like that, uh, do they have to wait until those symptoms are treated before they get vaccinated? Uh, like, how does that work exactly? No, I mean, I, I would say that if you're unvaccinated and you've recovered, um, and you're not coughing or anything, get vaccinated. So I think, um, you know, I think there's a lot of um, more literature coming around to kind of figure out whether or not 
vaccination me or me not improve your symptoms. Um, so I think it's a separate entity around being vaccinated. I think if you're unvaccinated, get vaccinated because even the fact that we know that natural immunity um, may not last as long as vaccine induced immunity. And so definitely vaccine immunity is much better um, if you've recovered from, from COVID. And then I think there are more clinics, more specialized clinics being formed around long COVID. Here at OHSU, there is a long COVID clinic that people could get referred into where they're multi-level specialists, pulmonologists, uh, rheumatologists, uh, psychiatrists, um, to help sort of manage some of the many symptoms of long COVID. Excellent. So I'm starting to see the graphic now, the infographic. Are you vaccinated? No, get vaccinated. I mean, are you unvaccinated? No, get vaccinated. Are you unvaccinated and have you had long COVID? Get vaccinated. Are you un like no matter what the scenario is? Are you unvaccinated and play baseball? Get vaccinated. <laughs> are you unvaccinated and going to the store? Get vaccinated. No, so no matter what uh, the apprehension is, the fact of the matter is, if you are unvaccinated, you are putting yourself at higher risk. Therefore, just get vaccinated. That is very true. Uh, actually, I'll take it a step further and say you're not just putting yourself at risk. You're yeah. putting even those that are around you at risk. Uh, right. So you you may you may have mild symptoms, but you may take it home and give it to other folks that uh, may not do as well as as yourself. So get vaccinated to protect to protect yourself. Get vaccinated to protect others. Right. And one thing too, I I think you know one of the things you realize too about hospitals is that we know all the other issues that we deal with never went away because COVID was here. Um, and think about the times that our hospitals were um, flooded with, with sick folks who had COVID or ICU beds were full. What happens if you have a heart attack? What happens if you have to see your doctor to uh, get your chemotherapy for your cancer? So this has like multi-level far reaching effects beyond just COVID itself. Um, as Dr. Dubay said, this is a community effort. And so, you know, people say, well, you know, I wear my mask, I stay home, that kind of thing. But there are other sort of, you know, ramifications of you not getting vaccinated. Mm. Oh, uh, thank you for bringing that up because yeah. guess what? We still have, um, we still had, yesterday we had uh, about 400, uh, 452 patients. As of this morning, we had 452 patients who are, who are in the hospital due to COVID-19. Um, we had 52 deaths yesterday due to COVID-related, um, uh, we had 52 COVID-related deaths yesterday, um, bringing the total to 4,855. So my heart aches for those families that lost their love, uh, that, that lost their loved ones. Um, it's, it's this, we're not, we're not out of the woods just yet. And we, we need to do whatever it takes to make sure that even uh, one death is is considered uh, too much for us. Agreed. Agreed. Dr. Evans, thank you for joining us. Do you have any final words or advice for our listeners as we move to this holiday season? You know, I, I think, you know, there's so many times that, you know, Thanksgiving or, you know, uh, Christmas, Kwanzaa, however you celebrate the season has been so, um, you know, it's less about family and what we can sort of by and so forth. And I have to say, I am going into this season thankful um, that my family is, is healthy. I think it really makes Thanksgiving really truly thankful that we're here to celebrate it with our loved ones, uh, to recognize that many people did not make it to this step and to just really to be thankful um, and to realize that, you know, the only way that we're gonna get through this is as a family and as a larger community and we need to all think about each other when we um, go to get vaccinated because it's not just about us. Excellent, excellent. Thank you so much. I feel like there's a lot of really good information in this episode. Uh, wish everyone the best going into the holiday season. I know there are a couple of friends of mine have already started Christmas decorating and Thanksgiving hasn't even gotten here yet. <laughs> <laughs> well thank you thank you thank you thank you guys for tuning in we will catch you next week actually Peace. no we won't catch them next week we're taking a week off 
for the holiday. Yep, we got we got we gotta uh, you know take time to give thanks to everybody. We gotta exactly. uh, take time to to give thanks to each other to to be grateful for for uh, what is going on in our lives. So um, I echo your message, DJ. I echo I echo your message, Doctor Evans. Thank you. All right, we'll catch you guys in two weeks. <laughs> Peace. Thank you. Thank you again for having me. Thanks for tuning in to Ask a Black Doctor, airing every Friday at eight a.m. and two p.m right here on The Numbers. If you missed it, you can find the link to the full episodes on our website at thenumbers.fm. You can also subscribe to the podcast on all streaming platforms. Be sure to rate and leave a comment. If you have questions you'd like answered on future episodes, you can submit them through our website or the link in our bio on Instagram and Twitter.